Howdy! In this tutorial, we will be discussing unsupervised image classifications that are performed per pixel in ArcMap. Unsupervised classification methods work well when the user does not know how many land covers are present in the image. When performing image classification, the computer uses the spectral signatures from each pixel to determine which class to place the pixel in. Before performing your classification, perform all of the pre-processing of the data, such as atmospheric correction, georectification, and any cropping of the image to limit the study area. Once we have the image loaded into ArcMap, we need to check that the Spatial Analyst extension is on. To do this, we will go to Customize, Extensions, and then ch make sure that the Spatial Analyst box is checked. Now that we've done this, we can go and actually perform our classification. Go to the Spatial Analyst tool, and then to the Multivariate, and then ISO Clusters Unsupervised Classification. Place the image to be classified in the input raster bands. For the number of classes, ARC recommends 10 times the number of bands. In this case, that is 30. This is the maximum number of classes, but is rarely the number of classes that are output in the final classification. Browse to the location that you want your classification saved and name it in the output classified raster field. The minimum class size is how many pixels are needed to make up a unique class. The value entered for the sample interval indicates that one cell out of that many in a block of cells in the raster are used in the cluster calculations. I'm going to leave that in the default. Now click OK. Unlike the maximum likelihood classification, which is supervised, the ISO cluster classification is quick on the front end of the classification and time intensive after the classification is performed. After ARC has completed the classification process, the output will be between 2 and 30. In my case, it is 17. The next step is to merge classes into more thematic groups. I find it works best for me to use trial and error to determine which class is which land cover and then choose a color accordingly. For example, class 1 appears to be water, so I will color it blue. Some classes, such as 3, will require manual corrections later as they are appearing in both water and vegetated areas. I'm not going to make you watch me color all of my classes, so, so let's go ahead and skip to a file where I have already selected colors for my 17 classes. The pink areas will need to be manually edited later, but before I get to that, I'm going to reclass the raster into my four classes. To do this, go to Spatial Analyst, Reclass, and Reclassify. Drag the raster into the input raster field. Make sure that the reclass field is value. In the reclassification table, we will use our colors as seen in the table of contents as our guide. All of the blue classes will give a value of 1. And then all of the pink classes, I'm going to give a value of 2. The green classes, a value of 3 and the tan class is a value of 4. I find it easiest to navigate down using the down arrow. Be sure that you specify where you want your new raster to be saved. In order to edit classes, the raster needs to be converted into a shapefile. So to do this, let's go to the Conversion Tools, then From Raster, and then we're going to use the Raster to Polygon tool. I will drag over my raster with four classes and make sure that the field is set to Value and not Count. After selecting a name for your raster, make sure that the polygons will not be simplified. This will prevent the polygons from overlapping. 
Once we have the shape file, I'm going to spend some time editing the polygons. To do this, I will need to have the editor toolbar available. You can open this by right-clicking on the top of the window and then selecting Editor. On the Editor toolbar, I'm going to left-click on the arrow next to the word Editor and then go down to Start Editing. This opens a dialog box where I select my polygon shapefile. Opening the editor will make it possible to split polygons and give individual polygons new values. There are several options on how to select multiple polygons, but I like to use the Select by Polygon tool. I don't know about you, but I find it hard to interpret the shapefile when it's all one color. To change this, let's right click on the shapefile and select Properties. Next, we will navigate to the Symbology tab where we will select categories on the left side. In the Field Value drop-down, we will select Grid Code. And at the bottom, we will hit the Add All Values button. Now, I have four color classes. To change the polygon values, we're going to open up the Attribute table by right-clicking on the shapefile and selecting the Attribute table. Let's select some polygons to change the values of. I'm going to use the Select by Polygon tool. The selected polygons are blue and are highlighted in both the map and the attribute table. Click on the Show Selected Records button on the attribute table. And then on the top of the grid code column, right click and select the field calculator. This is going to allow us to change the value of the grid code for all of the selected rows. Um, let's see, I'm going to change these to water, so I'm going to put one in here and then hit OK. And notice that those polygons have now turned blue. Next, we will use the Cut Polygon tool to split a polygon into multiple polygons. To use this tool, we must select the polygon we wish to split, and then we're going to click on this tool, and now we're going to start drawing some lines. No image classification is perfectly accurate, so depending on your project, a visual, visual accuracy assessment may be sufficient, or you may need to check the accuracy in a more qualitative a more quantitative instead of a qualitative fashion. This concludes our tutorial on unsupervised image classification in ArcMap. Thanks for listening, and for more information or resources from Texas A&M University Map and GIS Library, please visit our website at library.tamu.edu slash maps hyphen GIS.